What's up everyone, it's Zach. Welcome to the teardown of the Nike Air Zoom GP Turbo. I have been looking forward to this one for a while. This is gonna be fun. Here we go. It has been a privilege shanking tennis balls into the net with you. First thing I noticed dissecting this shoe is how light the upper materials are. With that woven material on the outside and that little bit of reinforcement on the inside, they're all pretty light, not a lot of stitching. If you remove the removable insole, you'll see it is pretty thick, just like the Vapor Cage 4s. However, the one difference is this removable insole is actually glued down to the non-removable insole, and that helps prevent static electricity on these shoes. You'll see why in a little bit. Now coming here through the heel counter of these shoes, much like the Nike Vapor Cage 4s, you'll notice when playing them and when I dissect them, that the heel counter, the solid heel counter, is not very solid. It's very movable. I can actually kind of scrape it just with my thumbnail. And that's pretty interesting in these Nike shoes. I really think a better design choice would be for them to make the heel counter a little more rigid because I think that would give you a lot more lateral stability. The one thing you do see is some nice padding around it, but if you see when I'm moving it, I can just move it back and forth any which way I want. Now moving on to the other upper materials, you'll see it's a three layer upper with this dynamic fit system they call. It's like a synthetic soft cage material that's integrated with the laces. And what this does is, is when you tie your laces, this cinches around your midfoot and acts as a point of stability and midfoot support integrating the upper and the midsole of the shoe. Now looking at these three layers, the very outer layer is very thin and light. The third layer, you get a nice little bit of padding on there. Now if you look at the top layers of the shoe, you got some reinforcement on the inside, but on the outside of the shoe, on the lateral side, Dremel Test burns right through the outer layer and even goes down into the padded layer. However, on the medial side where you got that reinforcement, when we perform our Dremel test, you see only a millimeter of damage. That is very durable. Looking at the tongue, you have a very generously padded tongue like most Nikes have, and you also have this reinforced system in the heel that cinches into the midsole, which does give you a little more heel security, almost kind of making up for that soft heel counter. What I found most interesting about this shoe was the non-removable insole. It's almost like a woolen, soft, fuzzy boot liner. Now, what happens is this is a double stacked air zoom unit, which means the top liner is sewn into the upper of the shoe, which you can see me press. Then you have that double stack, that second air zoom unit in the midsole of the shoe. So the material they use to make that top level of the air zoom unit needs to be a little more elastic so it expands with air in it. It also just is a little more comfortable, but you have to glue the removable insert in there so it doesn't build up a charge when you're running against it. And here you can see me pop that air zoom unit. Now, when I cut the shoes in half lengthwise, I didn't see anything under that contents under pressure sign in the mid part of the shoe. So I'm gonna take my saw and go right through that little insert in the shoe to see if that really does anything or if that's just another little plastic piece. Sneaky, sneaky. Ran under that contents under pressure sign, you just see a generous area of Nike foam. And then here's the bottom layer of the double stacked air zoom unit, and there's the top layer that we popped through before. But what is so exciting about this system is how all these layers work together. Here you can see the top level of the double stacked air zoom unit running from heel to toe. And in a second, you'll see me put my instrument in the bottom layer of the double stacked air zoom unit, which also runs from heel to toe with those fibers in there that help define the space and also evenly distribute air. Now the most important part of this system is that semi-clear plastic shank that goes all the way from heel to toe. And now typically in most tennis shoes, that is too uncomfortable. It makes the shoe too rigid. However, in this shoe, you've got two air units above it. So those two air units are gonna give you a bounce and then that shank is gonna give you that rigid cantilever effect and give you almost like a springboard effect. Here you can also see the midsole riding up on the arch, almost cradling the arch. So that gives you a nice little bit of arch support as well as just a little more stability in the midsole. 
Here we're going to measure the heel to toe drop of the shoe. I did get a request from a subscriber to start performing these tests. So we're going to do the heel to toe drop here on the Nike Air Zoom GP Turbo, which was 1.2 centimeters compared to the Adidas Stycon at 1.3 centimeters, the A6 Gel Resolution 8 at 1.2 centimeters, and the Nike Vapor Cage 4s at 1.5 centimeters. Outsole durability test with the Dremel with our highest grit sandpaper showed one millimeter of damage, which compared almost exactly to the Nike Vapor Cage 4s, which did surprise me because the Vapor Cage 4 outsole did seem a little tougher. However, they were just about equal. So this teardown definitely revealed some interesting surprises hidden within the GP turbos. Number one was that kind of quasi shank that ran all the way up and down the shoe. I think that's what gave it more bounce even than the Air Zoom units. The Air Zoom units probably made it feel more comfortable. So I had a couple requests from a few subscribers for some head-to-head -head performance reviews. So we are gonna do a head-to-head -head review in the world of Nike, as well as in the world of ASICs. So if you wanna be the first to see those videos, hit the subscribe button and notification bell. We also have a play test and performance review coming up of the Yonex Eclipsian 3s. I'm just going through my uh, play tests right now on those on court. So that'll be coming out soon as well. So the only thing I was disappointed about with this shoe was that the contents under pressure sign had nothing underneath of it. So obviously if you're playing on clay, you're not gonna get very far in these shoes. They're more designed for hard courts. So if you're playing on hard shoe or clay, maybe look for something with a more aggressive deep cut herringbone pattern. However, if you're playing on hard courts a lot, in my opinion, as a foot doctor and just as a tennis enthusiast, it'd be hard not to recommend these shoes. As a reminder, if there's anything I'm not covering in these shoe reviews that you would like to see me cover, just leave me a comment below, as well as if there's any shoe that you want to see me break down on court and under the knife, just leave a comment down below as well. Hope everyone has a great day, great night, wherever you're tuning in from. See you next time.